Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of Calling All Debs, the only weekly Q&A show where you get me asking questions that you guys submit, you guys vote on, putting them to the developers. Uh, it's our new thing on Mondays. This is our fourth and fifth episode now. I'm losing track. Let's just get right to it, shall we? All right, so starting off the show this week, uh, a question that uh, I think is on a lot of people's minds. Uh, I know just the person to call for it. It's Chad McKinney here in our Los Angeles studio. Chad, Chad, how you doing, man? Hey, doing well. Welcome to Calling All Devs. This is your first time on the show. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> you sound it. All right, so I've got a question. I've got a question for you that uh, it's on everybody's. Uh, people have been, I don't, I, it needs no introduction. Uh, what, what is golf citizen? What is golf ball citizen? What is ping pong citizen? What's going on here? Uh, well, it's a, it's an entertaining bug that's happening. Um, the root of the issue is that the uh, persistent data, persistent loadout for players getting wiped out, and effectively the, the body is getting detached. And um, when that happens, you end up spawning as a little white golf ball and bounce around. Uh, this is not the first time it's happened, but um, it does surface from time to time of similar root issues. And um, in this particular case, uh, it got out in 3.0 and started happening to a lot of people. And we weren't entirely sure what was causing it this time. Um, mm -hmm. After some investigation from QA and from our uh, live ops guys, looks like they got a solid repro from it, which is in a heavy server, making changes in the personal manager app was ending up sending incomplete or missing data uh, to the persistence database, which was causing this kind of corruption, which would cause you to sp uh, spawn as a white ball. Um, this is one of those situations where, I mean, obviously we did a ton of QA and, and bug fixing in persistence before we went out. And we just didn't see this like at all. We, we didn't see it at all. I've, I fixed a lot of persistent bugs and this was not one of them that even came in. Uh, and the issue is that the, the reason why it was showing up in, in live and not for us is because of the much heavier traffic uh, and performance issues at scale. And so we were um, able to find, thankfully, again, with some, some hard work from QA, some reliable repro steps and uh, they were able to reproduce it uh, by having people on the server and then also making some fast uh, swapping between in and out of Mobiglass, uh, applying changes in PMA, and we were able to kind of, doing, doing this like kind of whirling dervish act, you could eventually arrive at this white ball. Um, now you, mm -hmm. you said it, you said it wasn't seen in, in uh, Evocati. It was seen in Evocati, but too infrequently for yes. us to find the, the source for yes. it. This this was one of those things, one of those great moments where it's always important to remember that every Star Citizen environment, whether it's the Evocati or the PTU or even our live Alpha environment, is still a testing environment. You know, yep. They're all testing, and people are like, why did you push three point on scope? Because some things we knew we wouldn't be able to track down until we got this out to as many people as humanly possible. And it wasn't until we got it out to everybody and and started seeing the, the hammering that can only occur when everybody is in there uh, that, that we were able to, to actually track this down. So now, so now that we have the repro, uh, do we have a fix for it? Did we have um, a fix for it? I thought we had a it's, fix for it's it. A little, it yeah, fix. so it's a little bit up in the air, actually. Um, we put in uh, an initial fix for it that tried to uh, prevent the PMA from making alterations when it's in this uh, uncertain state. Effectively, the PMA operates using a lot of asynchronous operations. We need to make a request to the server to get the current persistent load out of the player and all of the items that could potentially go on any given item port. Uh, additionally, there's um, many chains of asynchronicity in the code itself. So you have the flash on the front end, but then that needs to talk to something in code. And so we have the flash, which talks to something called the context component uh, via events. And then it itself fires events to something called the provider component, which then coordinates using a bunch of remote methods to send requests to the server. And then we get responses and we chain back and forth. So there's lots of opportunities for um, when, when you have these kind of like timing operations for things to go awry. And so clearly we were playing a little bit fast and loose in, in this particular scenario. And we tried a, a couple solutions to try to, to make a small change. 
to to fix the problem you know this 3.0 is out we don't want to make some large change to the code to try to fix this bug and then introduce four or five more mm -hmm. so you know we tried small changes to, to fix it they didn't they started to fix it, but you could still um, get it to happen with a little bit more dedication. And then QA was yet again able to find a more reliable set of repros because they were looking at it longer. And this even led to finding some other bugs that we didn't even know were there, like spotting small ships in the actual game. We won't get into that. Um, <laughs> so anyways, long story short, we end up... Too late. <laughs> yeah, long story long. We ended up... Uh, doing a few more kind of more comprehensive set of fixes. Uh, I, I helped a bit, but a lot of it was spearheaded by the UI, guy, UI guys in um, the UK. And effectively, the, there's a few set of changes that probably fix it, which is don't make changes to persistent data when you know you shouldn't be. So if you haven't actually changed anything, don't allow a save. Um, don't okay. allow saving data when you're still waiting on something to finish. So if you've made a request, for some data, if you haven't gotten a response, don't save the data. And um, also prevent immediate transformation of the data. So the first, whenever you open the screen or after you've made a change, you don't, you shouldn't be able to like the next frame, again, apply a change to that data. So yeah. basically it's reducing all these opportunities for uh, in, incoherent data to make its way in when you know things are still in motion. And um, it looks like that we've uh, got Mostly a fix, and I need to look at my email and see what <laughs> QA is, is saying right now. Yeah, this, this is a fix that's currently in testing in a 3.0.1 patch that's with Evocati right now. Right. Yep. So, so, we, so we are currently testing potential fixes. Uh, I know we rolled out one version of 3.0.1. Uh, we're getting ready to roll out another version of 3.0.1 soon. Pro by the time this airs, we'll probably have done one, maybe even two more. Yep. Um, I mean, yeah. I, I've helped with a lot of other 3.0.1 patches as well and this is kind of the last one that's that's uh won't die but i think maybe we, we've got the bullet for it now oh yeah it will die it just hasn't died yet so all right chad thank you so much i'll let you get back to work thank you nice right, talking to you bye all right so up next i've got a question about ship interior customization that i think is perfect for matt sherman so let's see if matt picks up here matt how you doing man Yep. Hey, Jared. How's it going? Good. Good. Oh, I forgot you have a new desk. Yeah. Yeah. So oh. now we can also in intrude on the world of uh, John Schimmel whenever you yeah. call me. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I have to do the I do the tours here in the LA studio, and it's like I'm I'm dreading the first tour because I don't know where anybody is anymore now. <laughs> We've all moved around. <laughs> oh, all right. So I've got a question for you. Uh, it's about ship interior customization. Uh, yeah. Basically, uh, this question uh, from Spectrum voted on by the backers. They want to know uh, what our plans, if any, are uh, uh, to customize the and decorate the interior of our ships. Now, of course, this was uh, one of our original uh, stretch goals from way back in the day. So, so yeah. Uh, have, have we done anything with that? Have we, have we moved, made any movement on that? Uh, not, not a lot of, you know, active progress. It's definitely something that we're keeping in mind. It's something that we definitely want to deliver some, some fun options and choices for people to make. Um, but in the reality of things, it's just getting more ships out is the, the bigger priority versus getting these little tchotchkes in. But we've definitely got a few lists of, uh, different, you know, kind of dashboard decorations almost where it's like, yeah, I know because one of the old stretch goal ones was a bobblehead of some sort that everyone wants to see. So it's like, yeah. okay, not not just a bobblehead, but it's like, well, what if it just takes general physics? Yeah, yeah. Um, does it, can it shake with your ship? Uh, what are the kind of weird little things where it's like, you know, the the pendulum swings, whatnot. Um, so there's definitely a lot of stuff that we want to explore, and it's just. It, it's in its holding pattern right now, waiting for that right time to really build everything out and then start uh, getting all that integrated into the game. Okay. But, yeah, yeah I, rem I, rem I remember. Gosh, it was a couple months ago. I guess you, you you were you were going around the whole office and asking people, "What would you like to see in your in your spaceship?" So, you know, just just taking ideas. Yeah, you know? yeah. So so it, it's it's it's. And we, this has come up a couple of times. I, I know some some of the guys some in the, on the Flare team in Austin have asked questions about you know. Uh, internal ship decorations stuff like that so so it's definitely something that's on our minds it's just obviously one of the biggest aspects of game development is prioritization 
So yep. it, it, it's something we definitely want to get to. It's just maybe it's we don't know if it's time is, is, is now just yet. Yeah, because also once we free up some of that time and we really start diving into this, it's getting a lot of that other work out of the way first is going to let us really dive into it. So instead of just being like, oh, we've made a bobblehead or something, it's like, oh, no, we've got a whole run of bobbleheads. We've got all these other little tchotchkes, you know, bring your fan back and attach it to your, the sidewall of your ship or whatever. Um <laughs> So just, so just an idea, Cutlass people. He's not committing to it. Hey, no, we did no. bring the fan back. The fan is on the pilot seat of the Cutlass. It's just an integrated little yeah. box fan now and not, not like a have to punch the window to make it work fan. Yeah, it's not my fan. Hashtag not my fan. Wow. Hashtag You've just hashtagged me. God <laughs> I think you should do bobbleheads. <laughs> bobbleheads. Don't you think bobbleheads would be a good idea? I think bobbleheads would be a great idea, Chris. Jared thinks... Bobbleheads would be a great idea. Yeah. Jared's really smart. I, mean, I also think bobbleheads would be fun. It's just when to make them. You're my favorite person here, Jared. Oh, thank you, Chris. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, now we know it's a, a <laughs> fake thing. Uh, All right. Thank you so much for your time, Matt. Sure thing. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. So our next question, uh, our next question is about API. Uh, I think I know who we can call here. We've got Paul Rendell in our Los Angeles office who might might know about this stuff. Hey, Paul, how you doing, man? Hey, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet me? You know who I am. We hang out all the time, don't we? Okay. Uh, no, we don't hang out all the time. <laughs> he once killed me in, star in a Star Marine match like over and over and over again. That's my relationship with Paul Rendell. Uh, that's back in the days, right? Way, way, way back in the day. All right, so Paul, I got a question from you for you from the backers. Uh, it's about API. They say, can we get an API that will display data from external apps in the Moby Glass, or maybe even take information from the Moby Glass, like inventory, like player inventory and whatnot, and send it out to websites? What are our thoughts on that API? Okay, cool. Um, we have definitely plans for an API, uh, not so much for Moby Glass. It will be more an API to our like inventory data. Um, but I think that's exactly what you want, basically giving what ships you own, uh, what items you have, um, all those kind of things. We don't work on that API yet because the systems are still very much like uh, changing and like writing an API for data, which is likely to change is like uh, <laughs> yeah. not, the, not the most optimal way to do it. Um, the other way around, we are looking um, into ways to integrate Spectrum into the game. So a lot of features you currently have on Spectrum we try to want to get into the game, um, which could be part of a mobile glass app or part of the uh, on-screen chat and so on and so forth. Gotcha. So it sounds like we just need further development on the game itself and the UI itself and, and, and how things work in the game before we start building tools for our backers to yes, get full exactly. information for. All right, cool. I'll let you get back to work, man. Thank you so much. Cheers. Bye-bye. All right, bye. Right, so next question, we have a leaf blower in the background. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Next question is for uh, John Crew. He is our uh, lead technical designer out of uh, Foundry 42 UK. John. John, how are you doing? Man? Hello. Hey, uh, thanks, for, thanks for taking the call, man. That's okay. Now, see, I expected to call you like every single week when we started this show, and it turns out it's been Luke, poor Luke Presley. We've been calling Luke Presley every single week. Yeah, I've just been hiding. <laughs> All right. So... I've got a question for you. This is a very long, a very detailed question. Uh, it's one that comes up quite a bit. Uh, let me see if I can. Let me see if I can. Uh, I, I can narrow this down here. Uh, make this succinct because this is a um, redeemer. Good question. <laughs> literally the sum total of that question. Redeemer. Yeah. Redeemer question mark. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, it's it's not really a priority for us this year. We know it's a, a super popular ship. Obviously, it came out of. The next great starship uh big fan favorite but it's it's not where we need it to be uh, it has a lot of uh design problems um mm -hmm. and it's sort of it's not needed in the pe this year it's not needed in squadron this year um and we have ships that that we oh, need nice. more uh coming and it's prioritized appropriately um we know what we want to do with it uh just to quickly go over some like the design issues with it like there's there's the mystery ghost train turret where you sit in a seat and you go outside into space to get into the turret yeah. uh it's got uh it's a drop ship that holds six people which is not particularly fantastic yeah. um it's got lots of tight twisty spaces that just aren't metric so 
bringing all that together is is a fairly hefty rework and we sort of got two ideas internally where we want to go with it one is the the pure gunship route that it is sort of half a gunship half a dropship as it is and basically we're we're looking at those two avenues of just going full gunship full dropship um yeah. and at the moment we're leaning more towards the gunship side we've got other dropships that are better dropships than it uh, but we don't have that ac-130 style gunship that i think a lot of people would like right right now uh let, let's let's clarify that for a second looking at is we explore lots of ideas yes we, we have uh, lots of conversations yeah we, we, we consider doing this we consider it doesn't mean that's necessarily what's going to happen we, we, no. we, the decision has not been made to make it a gunship the decision has not no. been made to make it solely a dropship it's one of those things it's a conversation that has to happen uh yeah, this was a, this was a ship that was made by backers and like yeah. you said outside of metrics uh not only not outside of the metrics we had and then we've changed the metrics since then so it, do, it does need a lot of work uh and it will there will be some changes to it when it when it's time does come but it's just it's not it's just, time yet it's bubbling away in the background okay um uh look looking at the ship schedule of course we just published our public roadmap recently um i, I know not everything is on there like the whole sea is currently not on there and whatnot but is the redeemer something we're, we're considering working on in 2018 i don't think it is it's not to my knowledge but gotcha. uh, i'm not a producer fair enough fair enough uh well i I have talked to the producers, and it is not it is it is not a ship that we believe that we'll be uh, working on in 2018. So, so just want to put that out there because I know there's a lot of people who who ask every single week. You know, any information on the Redeemer? Any information on the Redeemer? Uh, there will be information, just not anytime uh, soon. So. Yeah, sadly. All right, John. Thank no you for being. Nutcracker wings. <laughs> thank you for being the bearer of bad news this week. Uh, well, someone's got to do it. Yeah. Uh, someone does have to do it, and that—that is—that is the double-edged sword of a, of a show like this. Uh, so it, it we'll get you answers. It won't always be the answer that you're looking for. All right, thank you so much, John. I'll let you get back to work. No problem. All right, bye. All right, bye. All right, so John Crew out of the uh, out of Manchester, United Kingdom, in with the Redeemer question. We get the Redeemer question uh, quite a bit. All right, so for our next call, we are going to. I'm getting a phone call. I'm getting a call. No one expects the bearded inquisition. <laughs> hey, Jeff, what's going on? Hey, uh, I saw last week's episode. Actually, I think I've seen all of them at this point. But okay. I wanted to offer a brief correction. It's really easy to think that we do database wipes because that's kind of how it behaves to the end user. But we actually don't wipe the database ever. We have all of the databases that we've ever used from the start of the project. Gotcha. You, you're, you're refer I'm sorry, I wasn't expecting a phone call. You're referring to Benoit uh, last week when he was when he was talking about uh, having the base UEC set uh, set as the uh, equivalent of an AUEC database for for when we wipe databases. And you're saying that we don't actually wipe them. We just we just move them off of the active environment and store them for research. So they're technically all stored in the same place, but okay. what ends up happening is usually I'm the one that ends up making a new database. And then when we launch a build, we tell the environment which database we want it to use. So if it's using a new one, obviously everyone starts fresh, but we still have all the old data just for historical purposes and science. Gotcha. So as well, that's probably important when figuring out things like the economy and what, how much people are making, how much people are spending and stuff like that each day. Huh? Plus the number of derelict ships that we have sitting yeah. around. Because so nice those are all still there. <laughs> they are still Okay. All right. Um, well, thank you for your clarification. Happy uh, to help. Also, that's a, that's, a, that's a stunning hat. Yeah, I actually wore this to a vacation I did in Alaska, and a couple of people took a picture with me because they thought I was a local. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, uh, thanks for calling. Feel free to call anytime, man. <laughs> Will do. Thanks. All right, bye. Well, up next, uh, we are returning to Manchester, United Kingdom, with our first time three timer, Mr. Luke Presley. Uh, let's see if Luke can. Hey, Luke. How you doing, man? Hi. How you doing? Hey. Welcome. Welcome. I'm, I'm doing, you know, it's me. It's another day in paradise. Mm -hmm. So, this is getting pretty regular. <laughs> The weather never changes here. We we, we we had we had a cloud the other day. It was nice. 
which is we all went out to the parking lot and just stood up and looked at the cloud like wow it's a cloud but uh, all right i've got a question for you i'm pretty sure you you, you know you know that you know this one's coming already we get this one a lot i go to bar citizens and people are like hey hey disco and i'm like yeah i'm like you're gonna ask me when, when the redeemer's coming out right like when is Tess Bannister coming out? I'm like, really? Oh, well, I'm just glad it's not a ship question. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yeah, your question your question from the backers voted on in Spectrum. What happened to Tess Bannister? Can we get her back, please? Without us, she is all alone out there, they say. Yeah, it, it was actually pretty hard ripping her out, actually. Like, she's our, our first mission giver. And, <laughs> um, yeah, but, I mean, yeah, she's coming back. So, Sorry. yeah. We actually recorded her voice for um, Frio, um, like uh, because we had all the actors in again. Mm -hmm. um, we, I mean, it would have been great to get her in for Frio, but we had so many other things to like. We had the uh, Miles Eckhart and Ruto was even a stretch for Frio, mm -hmm. um, and we had we've got her like in the back pocket, as it as it were. Um, the, the time I want to bring her back is when we have the missions that will do her justice, which is um, when we get scanning in, because um, she's the perfect mission giver for, for scanning type missions. Um, and I know, I do know that the universe is a little more hollow without her. Like, um, I, honestly, like she, there's something about that uh, actor and the way that um, she was written that really, like, just makes us like sparkle like it's something about it um so yeah don't worry it should be coming back i i do just want to do her justice though i don't want to bring her back to just have um kind of the same fetch missions that, that you've seen already so yeah okay. oh, well, uh, I'm, I'm sure there are plenty of people who will appreciate that so uh th th thank you so much luke you, you, you got anything else you want to you want to spoil? Just yeah. else? No? No, sorry. I've got no other secrets to give. All right. Well, uh, it's three times and three shows, so we'll see if, we'll see if we can go in a, a week, uh, next week without giving you a call, but no promises. Okay. Sure. Right. Well, I'll see you next week. <laughs> see you next yeah. week, man. Bye. <laughs> And with that, we wrap up another episode of Calling All Devs. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget that there are threads up on the announcements section up on Spectrum where you can submit your questions and, most importantly, vote. Uh, it's important that you guys vote on the questions that you most want to see answered each and every week. I'll do my best, best to best. I'll do my best to find the developer most appropriate to answering your questions. So for Calling All Devs, I'm content manager for Global Video Production, Jared Huckabee, and we'll uh, we'll see you next week, everybody. Thank you for watching. So if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in the Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.